Welcome again to all of you come this afternoon to continue our program. Our presenter this afternoon is Pastor Lowell J. Domokmat. He was finishing his M.Min and M.A.R. from IAS, and he is now being with us here. He is now Dean, School of Arts and Science, Northern Luzon Adventist College, Philippines. And he also already wrote one book named Chosen and Free. I think he may introduce later about this uh, book. And our title or topic this afternoon is Wedding Ring and Filipino Adventists in the Philippines. I think this topic is very important, not only for Filipino, but also for some part of uh, countries around, uh, around this Philippines. I think this uh, also hot issue in Indonesia. I think this is very interesting. You speak about uh, this uh, wedding ring uh, in, for us this afternoon. And welcome to all of us, and especially for Pastor Lowell. Welcome again, and this time is for you. Thank you very much for the introduction. I I just beg the organizers that the that the minutes that pass will not be against my time. As you have noted, the title of my paper this afternoon is Wedding Ring and Filipino Adventists in the Philippines. I am concerned primarily for Filipino Adventists residing in the Philippines. I am not concerned about those Filipinos who are abroad in North America or in Europe or in the Middle East. It is Filipino in a sense because when I wrote this paper, which was about five years ago, when I was still in Ayas taking MAR, I was thinking about Philippines, and I'm using the term also we wedding ring. I also notice that in other parts of the globe, they don't use ring but necklace as their wedding band. Because I'm, however, because I'm writing in the context of the Philippines in which wedding ring is being used, that's why I'm using this term. And I realize that it is this would be significant also in other countries particularly in Asia, that affect about the, that have effect on this thing. This paper is based from a case. So let me start by reading the case background. The case, which is the focus of this research, took place in Bulacan, Philippines. Bulacan is somewhere there. Go, if you're going to the north, of, if you will enter in Lex, that's the first province. Maria, the main character of this study, comes from that province to where she spent most of her life, except during her college years. After her college and passing the licensure examination for teachers by the Philippine government, she was accepted to teach in a government elementary school in her province. She is married, and to this date, they have two children. Maria, public school teacher was often attending school seminars in their school district, of which she mingled with her fellow teachers assigned in other elementary schools. Her colleagues, mostly members of the Roman Catholic Church, mistaken her as a single, may not married. But Maria informed them that she is already married. Her fellow teachers asked why she was not wearing a wedding ring, if she was truly married. Maria explained to them that she was not wearing jewelries, for she is a Seventh-day Adventist. Nevertheless, her fellow teachers directed her to their school district supervisor, who is an Adventist, and yet she was wearing a wedding ring. 
As a result, her fellow teachers suspected that she is just having a live-in relationship. I define live-in relationship down there below. It is not synonymous with trial marriage, but in some aspect they are similar. Meaning to say, when somebody is in this relationship, uh, they are living together as husband and wife without the blessing of the church and the state. We call it live-in relationship here in the Philippines. Maria told her husband about her dilemma. She and her husband began to seek help from others. In their search, they were able to read from their conference publication telling that wearing jewelries is their mean by the purpose. If it is simply for ornament, then it is wrong. But if it is a symbol, specifically the wedding ring, is not condemned. Like the wristwatch that we are using is a type of jewelry, but we said that the function outlasts its ornamental value. Moreover, besides her school supervisor, she also noticed some Adventist teachers in their place, teaching in other public schools wearing wedding ring. She asked her advice from her father, who is in the US. Her father told her that there is nothing wrong of wearing wedding ring. Finally, after some time of, ref of reflections on the wedding ring with her husband, and thinking that the purpose is not for ornament, Maria, together with her husband, decided to buy a ring in a jewelry shop in a show mart near them. She wears the ring when she goes out, especially for work. Nevertheless, she removes the ring when she attends church services. Seven the Adventists in the Philippines are dynamically participating and adopting various practices and customs of Adventist brethren around the world. It particularly happens when they go abroad or mingle with relatives and friends who brought with them Adventist Western culture during their vacations in the country. Others experience through intermingling with foreign missionaries. One practice certain Filipino Adventists in the Philippines adopt is the wearing of wedding ring. They wear wedding rings in spite of the general Filipino Adventist embedded biblical understanding that its use is forbidden in the scriptures. Based from the case of Maria and the increasing Filipino Adventist women wearing wedding ring in the country, this paper endeavors to shed light on its use. At the same time, this paper might serve as a catalyst to start a discussion on this subject among concerned leadership and members of the Southern Adventist Church in the Philippines and other countries that having this similar issue or concern. Let me give you a, a brief a discussion on Filipino and wedding ring to understand about this, the mentality regarding this thing. Roman Catholic and Protestant weddings in the Philippines include ring ceremony. In a book written by Joseph Bellis, this is, or this was his observation. According to him, the wedding ring is considered a vital part of the ceremony and is included except where there may be religious convictions against its use. In the services that use a wedding ring, there was a ritual enacted for the blessing and transfer of the ring from bridegroom to bride. It then becomes a part of their apparel. Uh, this was written as at M8 thesis at PUC, still in Baisa Campus, way back 1969. Affirming the religious meaning of the wedding ring, another author said, a wedding ring is another illustration of the sacramental nature of marriage. A circle of gold becomes an outward visible sign of the vow of fidelity and loving care of a husband for a wife. Nonetheless, in spite of the inclusion of ring ceremony in Roman Catholic, Protestants, and some Civil weddings, the wearing of wedding ring in the Philippines is not a part of national indigenous custom and never was a culture mandate. The ring was part of a dory. At its earliest beginning, the ring was part of a dory, when it became, which became the sign of engagement. There is a custom of, we call it in Tagalog, pamamanhikan. It is when the family of the, of the boy will meet 
the family of the lady and arranged about their wedding. We call it pamamanhikan. Okay. After the families of the boy and the girl agree on the dowry, we call it bigay kaya, the, day, the date of the wedding is set. Then the boy gives a ring to the girl, and they are pronounced betrothed. A small feast follows, is sponsored by the boy's family. The presence of the ring in the girl's hand signifies that the girl is taken, and suitors are not entertained anymore. The symbolism of the ring has evolved from social to spiritual. The wearing of the ring commences on the girl's betrothal, but it is not removed after the wedding rite. It continues as part of her apparel. The ring that marks the betrothed girl becomes the ring that signifies her married status after the wedding ceremony. It becomes a symbol of commitment and love. The ring was originally a symbol of the dowry, but it now carries a more spiritual meaning, a sign of God's peace and favor. And due to the influence of Spaniards and Americans, the giving of the ring is delayed. So it was later on delayed. Previously, it was given as part of the dowry. But because of the influences of this, uh, two nations, it was then delayed. And it was given during the wedding rite. That's why that engagement ring became a wedding ring. The wearing of wedding ring during the wedding rite to Filipinos is an adaptation of foreign customs. Its practice is apparently brought by Spaniards and Americans. Although some are saying, trying to connect the wedding ring to the, to the wedding. But as we have noticed, as I presented a while ago, that this, the, the ring that was given during the Pamamanhikan is, we call it, the engagement ring. Filipino culture is not static. It is dynamic in a sense that it goes with the change of time. Western lifestyle and culture influence a lot the Filipino mentality. Filipinos are continually adapting foreign values and, cu and cultures that in some way result in the waning of some indigenous customs. For instance, though the Pamamanhikan is still practiced today, but one cannot impose anymore the what we call the rigid paninilbihan, like what happened to Jacob when he went to Laban. He worked for seven years, an additional seven years. It was also practiced at its early era here in the Philippines. But now, the, uh, it's particularly in urban areas, it's, that's not practiced anymore. Likewise, the practice of bringing ceremony to religious and civil, civil weddings becomes a significant trite in Filipino weddings. And due to prevalent living relationship that disdain the church by the church, that is the Catholic and Protestants, and the conservative society being inappropriate and immoral, the wedding ring has begun to play a vital role. One's claim of legally married must be accompanied by the religious symbol, the wedding ring, as generally understood, particularly in urban areas. Failure to wear the ring means a doubt to one's claim of marital status. Let's go to the biblical theological analysis. And it's, okay. Certain passages of the scriptures, church fathers, and LNG White and Seventh Adventist Church will be examined. First, let's look at the ring and adornment in the scriptures. This paper was originally having more than 30 pages, but I need to trim and trim to make it 10 pages. So I remove a lot of paragraph and still, that's why a lot of, that's why I choose what I believe to be the best text here in this study. Fingering in the scriptures was a mark of authority and status. It was used as seal of authority by kings. You have those uh, biblical references, governors, and family leaders. It was also a symbol of life status, like in the case of the prodigal son and wealth. There is no reference of wedding ring in the scriptures. Perhaps a finger ring was not used as a wedding band during the Old and New Testament times. Instead, as William Barclay 
suggests that the 10 chained silver coins worn as headdress by the woman in the parable of the lost coin in Mark 15 was mark of a married woman equivalent to the wedding ring. This is his suggestion. The usages of jewelries in the scriptures are either ornamental or functional. Ornamental use means the jewelry worn has no other purpose but to adorn or enhance the appearance of the one wearing. On this usage, the scriptures prohibit. Functional jewelry, on the other hand, is worn with a non-adorning purpose, in which sense the Bible permits a restrictive use. For a, uh, more discussion on this, I recommend you to, to read a book of, I think it's the, in this, by, by Rodriguez about this restrictive use of the functional jewelries. But there exists the possibility that a functional jewelry could be made in such a way that its ornamental function outshines any other useful purpose. In that case, it must be considered inappropriate for a Christian to use. The biblical principles on the use of adornment is laid out by two New Testament passages, one in 1 Timothy and another one in 1 Peter. In, the, in this text are three elements of adornment presented at the same order, braided hair, gold, and clothes. Peter says, I just read the English translation, of which your adornment should not from outward, breeding of hair and wearing of gold or putting on of garments. And to Paul, writing to Timothy, the apostle says, not in braided hair and gold or pearls or expensive clothing. In Paul's version, he added pearls, that is margarita, margarita is in Greek, and an adjective describing the kind of clothing. Peter and Paul, though talking in different contexts, admonished the early Christian believers on the spiritual impact of their outer conduct. It is explicit in 1 Peter 3 verse 1 that the reason for Peter's admonition is for Christian wives to win their unbelieving husbands by their behaviors. Peter differentiates inner and outer beauties. According to him, the inner beauty that is gentle and quiet spirit, not the outer is of great worth in God. Paul, on the other hand, is writing on how women conduct themselves in worship. They should be dressed modestly with decency and propriety. Paul then defines what he meant with modest, decent, proper dress as not with braided hair or gold or purse or expensive clothes. Further, he adds that women who profess to worship God should be with good deeds. Although the context of the admonitions of Peter and Paul to women is different because one is for mission while the other is for worship, both have in mind the right and wrong sources of women beauties. Both agree that the correct source of women beauty, which is of great worth to God, comes from the inside, the godly character. And commenting on these passages, James Hardy said, the sculpture and literature of the period make it clear that women often wore their hair in enormously elaborate arrangements with braids and curls interwoven or piled with high like towers and decorated with gems and or gold and or pearls. The courtesans wore their hair in numerous small pendant braids with gold, droplets or pearls or, or gems every inch or so making a shimmering screen of their locks. Pliny, the governor of Bithynia, complains of the vast sums spent on ornamentation and various satirists comment on the hours spent in dressing the hair of women. Greg Keener also affirms by saying that most Jewish teachers allowed wives to adorn themselves for their husbands, but both Jewish and Greek Roman moralists ridiculed women who decked themselves out to turn other men's eyes. Jewish writings warn especially of the sexual temptation involved in such adornments. Greek Roman writers also condemn wealthy women who show off their costly array. 
Hair was sometimes braided with gold, which Paul might have in view here. Men were especially attracted by women's decorated hair. But I do not know today if men are still attracted with the way women um, decorate their hair. Besides its ostentatious display, the wearing of elaborate hairy styles with gems on it and costly clothing are also associated with courtesans and harlots. Rather than ex exalting Christ through good deeds, the intention of women braiding their hair and putting on gold or silver and wearing expensive apparel is to exalt themselves and to its extreme, a sign of harlotry, if there is such a word like that. Peter and Paul denounced this attitude and admonish women believers not to adorn themselves with such things. Instead, the principle of simplicity, modesty, and economy should be observed. Let's look at the comments of certain church fathers regarding wedding ring. During the second and third centuries of Christianity, the use of marital ring is allowed and even endorsed in some extent by early church leaders. For instance, we have here Tertullian. He was a known strict promoter of Christian decorum, but he did not condemn the wearing of marital ring. And he even viewed the ring as, a, as an evidence of modesty and a symbol of fidelity to one's spouse. In his strong condemnation of wearing gold, he said, Save on the finger which with the bridal ring her husband had sacred pledged to himself. So, mean to say, he talked against other ornamental jewelries, but he said, save or accept the, the finger ring, or we call it today the wedding ring. Clement of Alexandria, he lived the same period with Tertullian, explained the reasons why Christian women should not wear luxurious dresses, rings, earrings, or elaborate hair dos. At the same time, he clarified his approval of wearing signet ring as the only permissible jewelry. He declared that the word permits them, referring to women, a finger ring of gold. Nor is this for ornament, but for sealing things which are worth keep, keeping safe in the house in the exercise of their charge of housekeeping. However, claimant prohibited, prohibited other rings besides the signet and vice to cast them off based from the scriptures. According to the understanding of Bakyuki commenting on that statement, Bakyuki said that the signet rings that women wore mentioned by Clement were the same with their marital rings. So that, that signet ring functioned as a seal to, the, to their properties at the same time as a symbol of her marital status. To Clement, the function was both practical and protective. It is practical in a sense that it was used by the wife to see the properties in the house for security of ownership. And it is protective in a sense that it serves as a bond chaste modesty of the wife to her husband. Nevertheless, the simplistic type and practical use of the finger ring faded as the Christian church grew into prominence. It is observed by the 15th and 16th centuries, the bishop of the church wore three or four additional rings. The leaders of the Church of Rome adorned themselves with gold rings, jewels, expensive vestments, as shown even today, that the simplicity, modesty, and economy, biblical principles went the way. Let's look at Ellen White. There is only one instance in the published writings of Ellen G. White in which she stated her view on the wedding ring. While in Melbourne, Australia, on August 3, 1892, Ellen White mentioned about wedding ring. In view of the pioneering work in that place, she admonished the brethren to exercise self-denial and self-sacrifice. The financial situation was so tight that she stressed the significance of every dollar. And inst instead of spending for extravagance, it should be used to win a soul. It is in this context to which she penned 
that the wives of ministers should not burden themselves of conforming to the custom of wearing wedding ring. She declared, Some have other burden in regard to the wearing of a marriage ring, feeling that the wives of our ministers should conform to this custom. All this is unnecessary. Let the minister's wives have the golden link which binds their souls to Jesus Christ, a pure and holy character, the true love and meekness and godliness that are fruit born upon the Christian tree, and their influence will be, sec will be secure anywhere. The fact that a disregard of the custom occasions remark is no good reason for adopting it. Americans can make their position understood by plainly stating that the custom is not regarded as obligatory in our country. We need not wear the sign, for we are not untrue to our marriage vow. And the wearing of the ring would be no evidence that we were true. I feel deeply over this leavening process, which seems to be going on among us, in the conformity to custom and fashion. And she added this strong statement here. Not one penny should be spent for a circlet of gold to testify that we are married. However, Ellen White affirmed the wearing of wedding ring to places where it is imperative. She said in the same book, In countries where the custom is imperative, we have no burden to condemn those who have their marriage ring. Let them wear if let them wear it if the, they can do so conscientiously. And here, Alan Watt understood wedding rings as a functional jewelry and endorsed its use as the custom requires. Alan Watt's provision of the wedding of wedding ring appears only once in her total writings and even is stated in the context of financial difficulties. And instead of the wives of American missionaries buying rings to abide with the custom in Australia, she admonished them to use their pennies wisely in helping the work. But in that same place of provision is a statement of permission to the use of wedding ring to places where it is imperative. Let's look at the position of the Seventh Adventist Church regarding this matter. Jewelry is defined as objects of precious metal often set with gems and worn for personal adornment. Another definition, ornaments such as bracelet, necklace, or rings made of precious metal set with gems or imitation gems. Two things can be deduced from these definitions. Wedding ring is jewelry. No question about that. And the purpose of wearing jewelry is mainly for adornment, according to the definition. What then is the church's understanding on wedding ring? According to Bakyuki, he observed that the wedding ring has been a sensitive issue in the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Nevertheless, the Adventist Church has a consistent position on wedding ring. In, in quote, in some countries, the custom of wearing the marriage ring is considered imperative, having become in the minds of the people a criterion of virtue and hence it is not regarded as an ornament. Under such circumstances, we have not disposition to condemn the practice." End quote. At the same time, the church believe on the biblical principle that the inner beauty of gentle and quiet spirit, as said in 1 Peter 3 verse 4, is the one word of God which is reflected in our fundamental belief number 22. I read. We are called to be a godly people who think, feel, and act in harmony with the principles of heaven. For the Spirit to recreate in us the character of our Lord, we involve ourselves only in those things which will produce Christ-like purity, health, and joy in our lives. This means that our amusement and entertainment should meet the high standards of Christian taste and beauty. While recognizing cultural differences, our dress is to be simple, modest, and neat, befitting those whose true, whose true beauty does not consist of outward adornment, but in the imperishable ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit. The wearing of wedding ring in the early Christian church, Ellen White in the Seventh Adventist, is not a moral, but an etiquette issue. 
It's not a matter of truth and error. The wedding ring could be similar to the signet ring in the scriptures, which is worn because of its function and its use could be permissible. I look at the last section of my paper, pastoral guidelines. Now, this would be my advice to Maria. The wearing of wedding ring, though it is not indigenous practice in the Philippines, its use is prevailing. It is undeniable that there are places and situations which its use is called for as a, mat, as a marital fidelity etiquette. When the wearing of wedding ring becomes necessary, I suggest the following guidelines. One, faith or belief must go with the practice. If one is in doubt on the scriptural support allowing the wedding of wedding ring, better not to wear. For if it is against one's conviction or one's faith, according to Paul in Romans 14.23, it is sin. Number two, the church is a community of believers whose degree of faith maturity is heterogeneous. There might be members in a church who are offended spiritually by the wearing of wedding ring. Be careful, therefore, that the use of wedding ring should not dissuade members having weaker faith. And this number two is not only true for us. I would like also to be bold enough to say that even to our missionaries who are visiting churches, particular churches in the provinces, because when they see you wearing ring, some of the members will have a big question mark in their minds. Number three, the basis of choosing a wedding ring to wear should be in harmony with the biblical principle of simplicity, modesty, and economy. In view of this principle, a plain silver or gold ring is suggested. As a member of one body, the, the local church, a member should humbly inform the believers of the plan to wear a wedding ring to avoid surprise whenever they see you having one. In doing this, the Council in Romans 14.3 should be observed. And lastly, to promote unity and respect in the church, it would be better to remove the ring whenever attends worship services in church-related activities in places that it's, it's a no-no for the ring. In this way, the person concerns, concern shows interest to the well-being of her brothers and sisters in faith. In my conclusion, the wearing of wedding ring to seven Adventists in the Philippines is not a moral but an etiquette issue. The wearing and unwearing is not a matter whether it is sinful or not. And due to the growing diversities of cultures in the Philippines, let the local culture be the, be the determinant of the etiquette of wearing wedding ring. This is in line with the Council of Ellen White. But the possibility remains that a ring specifically for a purpose may transcend its functional use by its make. In this case, the wedding ring becomes an ornament. Thus, simplicity, modesty, and economy should be the criteria in the choice of a wedding ring when one Filipina or Filipino or Indonesian is required to wear. Good afternoon. Now is the time for asking and answer. Maybe do you have something to say or to ask about this uh, presentation this, this afternoon? This is the time. You may raise your hand. Yeah, please. Thank you so much for the presentation, Pastor. I want to ask, um, according to last night, uh, Pastor Paul, talked that in India they have this, uh, they use three threads to symbolize that a woman is married. Is there anything in the Filipino culture between married couples that shows to the public that they're married or, or there is nothing at all in the way the woman dresses or even a man? I'm talking in a, in a general understanding, besides the ring, there's none. There's no necklace or headdress or what. Yeah, this part.
No more question? Uh, thank you, Pastor, for a wonderful presentation. Um, the thing that came to my mind, last you said that uh, the belief and practice, it always goes together, right? But uh, how we will see these things when we are practicing something inside the church but not outside the church? We understand the situation is different. Some people may uh, suspect that you are married or not, especially here in Philippines. But in Christian ethical situation, how we can handle these things? Is it, uh, is it a really big issue as a Seventh Adventist or not? I don't think in other countries, but in the Philippines, it, it is a growing concern. I don't like it to say it is already an issue. I would better say it's a growing concern, particularly in urban areas. But not yet a national concern. Yeah, one more question there. Pastor Mandak, please. Thank you. In your suggestion, you said that some missionaries should be careful when they are wearing these rings in front of some church members who are offended. But did you also suggest that uh, Maybe the local pastor should also inform the church members about uh, the statement of the GC concerning these uh, rings and about the statement from Ellen Jewett so that the local church members should understand and maybe not uh, condemn other people from outside. Do you have such suggestion also? I did not put that, but I believe that would be an implied suggestion to continue educate our hello. That's Mike. To continually educate also our brethren. In fact, when I was a young pastor, I was so rigid in saying that all jewelry except the watch. But now I'm a little bit. <laughs> I need now to define ornamental and functional to my listeners that there are that they are general categorized as this. Yes. It's, I did not put there about continual education of our members here in the Philippines. But uh, I would say that in places with which that the use and non-use of this wedding ring becomes a concern, I suggest those pastors concerned also to, to begin to educate the members. But as I put there, we need to understand also that particularly the old ones, who were born, they were baptized, that all jewelries except the what, all jewelries are wrong. I think it would be a little bit hard or difficult for them to change their mind. They would always say, rings, whatever be the function, is wrong. Yeah, I think uh, we limit, but uh, we give you the last chance to ask. This is the last question. We all, most of us come from different, different countries, and I don't think that the situation here in the Philippines is unique. Um, I come from the Dominican Republic in Latin America. Not all Latin American countries have the same situation, but in our country, among Seventh-day Adventists, the, the wedding ring is something not well seen. Now, a couple of years ago, my wife, my family, and I, we went to work in Egypt as, as missionaries. And we were told, if you go to Egypt, you cannot keep your Dominican mentality. You have to, we ha you have to wear the wedding bands, which was very strange for us, but because we wanted to minister to the local people, we ended up buying those, those rings. We felt very strange the first time in my life I, I put this. So we go there. And as we were told, most Seventh-day Adventists are wearing the rings. Now, when I'm taking pictures, you know, I'm sending pictures to my family, I have to hide my ring because 
this would be a stumbling block for many people. Now, one day I was going on vacation to my country, and I lost my ring. It was very expensive. So when we went back, we went back to Egypt, we discovered that we could live without the ring because it is your attitude and the way you behave that shows that you are married or not. Number one. Number two, we discovered that other fellow missionaries who were from America didn't wear the rings. Now, to close my, my comment, I was invited to officiate in a, in a wedding in Canada just last summer. It was a young missionary that we had met in Egypt. She was getting married to an American. So she's from Canada, and he's from America. And to our surprise, they were not wearing rings. And almost none of those Adventists in the wedding were wearing rings. Some friends that we have in America, white Americans, are not wearing rings, which means that we cannot say this is an American uh, mentality. I would say that it is a mentality that could pervade any country. And in my opinion, at least in the case of the Dominican Republic, I cannot judge any other culture, people from the Adventist church who are beginning to wear rings are using it as a fashion because not even in the U.S. is mandatory. Many Seventh-day Adventists in the U.S. don't wear that but because the way they behave, uh, it shows that you are married or not. Of course, I would suggest that we respect those who understand that they need that. And also, I would ask that those who believe that they have to worry to respect those who don't agree. As we become a more international church, it will, be, it will become more difficult for us to keep local customs because it's now very difficult, especially when you find international church leaders uh, doing things, wearing things that we locally don't accept. So it is a very difficult issue, and I hope that God may help the Filipinos to to handle the situation that is becoming difficult, at least in the Dominican Republic. Thank you very much for uh, Pastor Lowell Domokmat for your presentation this afternoon. Let us give him uh, applause. And the last part, I want to uh, read this certificate of appreciation. IAS Asian Theological Society Certificate of Appreciation gratefully presented to Lowell J. Domokmat in sincere appreciation for your valuable presentation on wedding ring and Filipino Adventists in the Philippines during the second IS Asian Theological Society forum with the theme, Issues in Belief and Practices, Understanding Biblical Theological Principles for Controversial Practices of Seventh-day Adventists in Asia. Given this day, 14th day of June 2014 at IS at Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, Laan First Silang, Cavite, Philippines. Nan Gildorf Mandak, 2014, IAS, IATS Forum Chair, Dr. Dr. Bien Venido Mergal, Sponsor, and Henry Sitangang, IATS President.